call to order the Tuesday, January 21st meeting of the Monmouth City Council and ask Phyllis to call the roll. Councillor Carey is excused. Councillor Koontz? Here. Councillor Meyer? Here. Councillor Milligan? Here. Councillor Schaefer? Here. Councillor Silbernagel? Here. Mayor Obers? Yes. All right, so the pike salute, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Um, so we have three, well, really four pieces to things tonight. And that is, in addition to the council meeting, we have an urban renewal agency meeting and a work session that includes an executive session on uh, um, reviewing public employees. And uh, so I'm going to do it in that order, and we'll have the council meeting, and then we'll jump straight into the urban renewal agency before we move over to the work session. So uh, just a quick rundown of coming attractions. And the first item on the regular council meeting agenda is the consent calendar, which consists of the minutes from the council meeting of January 7th and the work session from the same evening. I can have a motion to approve. Move approval of both. Second. I'll give it to Jesse. All right. Moved and says it's dead tied. Moved and seconded. In favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, we'll adopt those two sets of minutes. Um, mayor's report, I attended. Um, I, was, I was asked not long, well, a while ago, I guess now, that serve on the Transportation Options Advisory Committee at ODOT. This is a body, we have a new uh, sort of branch of the Transportation Plan in Oregon around transportation options and uh, meaning how do you get from point A to point B and what are all the different ways you might do that and what can we do to help people choose amongst the options that are available to them and what can we do to uh, improve on those options. And so an advisory committee was uh, created to help craft the documents that will put this new piece of the transportation plan in place. And uh, because of my involvement with the Transportation Enhancement Advisory Committee, I was asked to serve on this thing as well. So um, I attended that today, and we're slowly but surely cranking through uh, the creation of documents around that and hope to have it done by uh, late this year. So I'll keep you posted as things come along with that. Um, <clears throat> the only other item I have for you, uh, I'm hoping that folks who are getting an opportunity to check in on WIMPEG um, and the continued improvement on, on the stuff that is being uh, put on our three channels on MyNet. Um, Rod Killen, in addition to uh, uh, those productions has, that he's created, is also starting to work with folks in the community. He's pointed out that there are, there are miles of video footage in this community with everybody having cell phone cameras and tablet cameras and so on that given a little assistance could be uh, dropped to a computer and edited and actually put in. So uh, he's in starting to offer training for how to do that. Um, uh, he, uh, he's also noted that uh, one of the members of the Winpeg Advisory, or Winpeg uh, Board of Directors, has a large, a big screen television and no cable service of any kind because everything he watches comes in on the internet from YouTube and various other uh, content delivery services. And that's a direction that a lot of people are headed, just like people are dropping landlines, they're also shifting to internet-based television. So Rod has set up a YouTube channel uh, for Winpeg now, and we're also looking at, uh, he's got a Facebook page up for Winpeg where you can go and check out schedules for the, the three um, MyNet channels. So uh, if you haven't looked in on Winpeg lately, I would urge you to do so. That would be channel 17, 18, and 99 on my net. And uh, we'll continue forward from where we are there. Can I add to that? Yes, um, please do. I was uh, actually part of the first training, um, video training for the Winpeg. They partnered with the YMCA, and uh, they are working with the YMCA because apparently youth sports and youth activities is a TV gold according to uh, MyNet, and so we were like, awesome, we'll take a Pac-10 channel, just like, uh, we'll be a Y channel, but no. Um, we've got to start small, so we've got to start training, or we trained um, a couple staff, including myself, um, and then the idea is to train volunteers, the idea is to get community members to be able to put content, or get content to Rod and the Winpeg board or group to 
not have to spend any time editing. And I can just instantly put it up. So that's cool. a big piece. And then um, Very good. I have spent, I've spent quite a bit of time lately watching the Winpig channel on YouTube, actually. So good. I'm excited. Okay. Um, turning to reports from council reps to boards and commissions and council reports. Tell me about the library board. Well, thank you, Mayor. Um, actually, I, I wish that people watching on the YouTube channel could um, hear the report that we're going to hear later on from our library advisory board, but I, um, they have a lot of amazing things that have happened throughout the year, but I'll just talk briefly about our meeting of January 8th. Um, the library board was um, in discussion with our library director about upcoming needs to be considered as we enter budget season. So knowing that we have a budget workshop coming up, we kind of discussed what are some of the the things that we see with a new director, maybe a new direction in library work, um, what are some of those considerations we want to get into the city budget? So we kind of talked about that. And also, um, really looking forward to a our, uh, major program, uh, looking at expanding adult programming. And so we have discussed with the city manager changing city policy to uh, perhaps allow um, alcohol to be served on city property and if that gets worked out in time to have the wine and poetry tasting event that has been scheduled for March 15th at the library and we'll hear more about that but it would be a lovely evening uh, perhaps music and uh, poets reading poetry discussions of poetry some with a, a lovely evening at the library. In the meeting room versus the actual library. I don't know about that. <laughs> okay. That could well happen all over the library, Ben Leonard. We want people to be in the library, right? So why wouldn't you have things in the rack and the stuff? That's the clarification. Yeah. It's going to be a fun event. You're going to want to be there. Very good, thank you. Councilor Schaefer. Uh, Mayor and Council, I uh, apologize. I was not able to make it to the meeting on the 15th. Um, so um, I don't have anything to report. Okay. Uh, Councilor Milligan. Sir, Parks and Rec, uh, their last meeting, uh, a few things were updated. Uh, Madrona uh, Park Walking Trail and Arboretum, um, the 420000 grant. Uh, is funded and secure. Construction schedule is to start in June of 2014. And I believe that uh, there'll be a groundbreaking uh, at that time. And then completion should be somewhere around November on that. Um, Main Street Park Amphitheater. Quite a bit has happened on that since uh, I last updated you. Another concept, I think I told you, E has gone through another revision. Um, and currently, that revision is the one that the uh, Parks and Rec Board prefers. Uh, they had another meeting to look at some things, and then on January 17th, the project oversight team uh, met with the design team and the sound and light techs to discuss more technical issues. And then on February 12th, there's going to be a review of the detailed designs, landscaping, and costs by the Parks and Rec Board and the project oversight team. And then possibly there'll be a recommendation come out of that to, to the council. And if there is a recommendation, it should be before us at a council meeting in March. Okay. And uh, let's see, what else is there? I think those are the two significant things that came out of that meeting. Did, did uh, where you said plan E, correct? Yes. Are we still somewhere similar to what we were voted on by the community, or have we veered away from that quite a ways? Uh, we have not veered away from that quite a ways. We have adapted a lot of what was said because there was no clear, clear direction. outstanding direction, but there were enough directions that um, parts of B and D have been incorporated into E, and then from there mm -hmm. some revisions. So. So we're on, we're on E sub 1 right now, or E sub 2. Yeah, e, yeah something like that. Okay. And um, E is basically a hybrid of two of the previous. Correct, yeah. Okay. And 
not all that different, but the next time it comes before the Parks and Rec Board, there'll be more details about construction materials um, and costs and lighting and landscaping and a lot more details that we haven't seen yet. And then that, like I said, if they feel that that's adequate for us, then they'll make a recommendation to bring us to this in March. Cool. Okay. Are there any community announcements? And then I'll turn to the city manager. Thank you. I want to bring attention to the 2013 annual report. I just wanted to highlight some of the items. And I think overall you can see, once again, well, this is a high-performing organization. We're delivering great core services. We're continually improving operations and completing some big projects. We're moving the community forward and doing a good job. And the police section, obviously the big one there is the bond measure passing for our police station. That'll be the agenda I need, but later talking about you know, some kind of concrete methods on that. Uh, they also, uh, for the first time in a long time, actually got OLCC cooperation. They had a, had a troubled facility in town with uh, alcohol issues and actually got their cooperation and um, really actively worked with them and made some progress there. Uh, a really nice one, uh, you had the presentation uh, a few weeks ago on the e-citation program, I actually acquired a grant for that and um, got that going and we're looking forward when we can get that integrated with the court system. If you go to the next page, the power and light. First one to note there is that we have uh, energy conservation efforts and with the kilowatts we've saved with what we're doing, I think the neat figure there is that we've actually saved enough electricity to power 12 homes. You know, so we're not talking just nibbling a little bit and we're making substantial improvements and really having some savings. Uh, next one's going to do similar in a different angle is the LED street lights. We were up in the Ash Creek area and we're going to start moving that out you know, through the rest of town that will also have some nice savings. And then the uh, cable replacements, one thing that happens in a lot of cities is sometimes you, you wait until you have to fix something, and we just continually replace cables and do underground projects. We just got on continuous to just build that into the, the budget and the process, so we just continue to do that. Under uh, finance, got the uh, audit done on time, and uh, it looked really good. Uh, debit and credit cards are being accepted at City Hall. And we're pretty close to uh, online payments. We've we got some work done there. Uh, Mark's done a really good job restructuring the whole utility section, the website. You can go to different information. Here's how you can pay payment options. Really, really boosted that. So it's uh, really user friendly. And so once we get a couple, a couple of details lined up, we'll be rolling on the online payments too. And if you go to the next page, municipal court. I hope to say by now we can be converted to a new software, but. Sometimes things don't go the way you expect them to. The, the data that we're dealing with is so bad and odd that they can't get it to convey to the new system. I mean, mm. even with all the experts involved, they can't figure out how to get there. They're going to take one more shot of their way, or what happens is some of the files don't line up with the case. And so what we might have to do is basically put a, a dummy code on them, so then we can go back later and say, okay, that's a bad file. Then we'll go do the research, and we'll get the right information, then insert it into the into the system, but um, you know, you just see over and over, you know, the state having problems with, you know, software projects. City of Portland has it. Computer stuff's really difficult. You know, and it's not as easy as people would think. Oh, we'll just do a new software and do some stuff. It doesn't really work that way. Um, continue down library. Lots of shifts there. We had a new library director, and we'll see the backfill of the new children's librarian. And it's kind of more of a continuous one there. When we talk about the collection of being shifted. That's what the library is just doing. It just continues to adapt. Um, you know, there's changes in users, electronics, how people acquire information, and they're staying on top of that and staying ahead of it. And uh, community development, quite a few. Got a historic resources inventory updated. Have uh, another you know, 57 structures. On to the following page. As Steve just mentioned, we had this $420,000 grant from the Madonna Park. That's going to be a huge project next year. And then work on the amphitheater design. And we had the housing inventory and housing needs assessment completed. Now that's a base for headed toward looking at our land needs, you know, urban drop boundary expansion, a couple areas there. So that was a, that was a big project to get that done. Under the senior center, the uh, WU students, actually nice one there, 3,331 hours just helping people. You know, and they're still loaded on that. It's, a, it's an interesting one when you go across the scheme and you look at how many volunteers really we are engaging. Uh, the senior center has all the students helping. Volunteers help out with projects. The library has their core group of volunteers. Um, we have tons of people coming to us with projects in the park area, so we're working with them, let alone our kind of regular work with you know, business associations and other folks. 
And then also a big one's the building expansion you guys just talked about was moving forward in that doing a scaled down project that's doable and we know we'll be hitting the Dana Street on that pretty soon. In the building department, you know, a little bit quiet, always have your routine things, but the university is always nice enough to, to give Larry something to work on. So <laughs> we did some work there on a couple projects. And then a big one, uh, kind of last one there on the next page was a completely electrical certification. When they originally put this program together, it was essentially impossible for a non-journeyman electrician to pass the test. And um, Larry kept working hard at it. They also did some adjustments to the program. And so he is now able to, you can do actually all your needs um, without you needing to use contractors. So that will actually keep things going really well, nice efficiency there. Uh, public works, that's always the visible stuff. Our, our splash play fountain, which has been way more successful than we could have thought it would have been. Uh, getting the dog park constructed. Having a grand opening when it's 15 degrees is always fun. <laughs> and then, uh, and then the, uh, working with the volunteer groups, wanted to point that out with, you know, we got people at different parks um, doing projects, let alone our normal tree planting. Uh, down toward the bottom, the parking. We had the parking discussion, and we generated really a bunch of parking spaces you know, around town, trying to loosen things up a little bit. That was good creative work on that one. And then the last page, just to note, was the overlay project on Main Street. So that got the second half of the Main Street project done. Uh, so overall, I think it's a great list, and I said, as I said before, I'll stack us up and finish the year. So, or even bigger if you want. Very good, Scott. Thanks. Any questions, Council? Looks good. Okay. Uh, citizens' comment time. Any of you want to have any comments for anything that aren't otherwise on the agenda? Yes. On up and your name and uh, city for the record, please. And Alrighty. Well, my name is Rose Dorn, and I have just recently moved here on November 1 from Washington State. I really um, am loving it and enjoying it here. I love the small town feel that we have. Um, and just what little I've heard, it sounds like Monmouth is a nice place to be. Um, this is probably far from anybody's thought and agenda, uh, what I'm going to speak on, but it's something that's very near and dear to my heart, and that is water fluoridation. Fluoride is an absolute toxic waste. And how do we get it in our water? And why do we have it in our water? It has so many health effects from the destruction of every organ in our body, our brains, our hearts, our kidneys. They've done many tests, many researchers uh, on uh, one, one area they did where um, they had 10 cities that were unfluoridated and 10 that were fluoridated. And over a 17-year period, the death rate in the fluoridated cities went up 10%. Now, there's no reason why we should have fluoride in our water. And I would really love if all of you would help me to get the fluoride out of our water. I just moved here. I came from an area that was unfluoridated, which I loved. Just in the short time I've been here, I really feel it in my skin, the dryness, the, in my hair, everything. And it, it just doesn't make sense. And my question is, we have, I mean, why, how much money do we spend on fluoridating this water? Does anybody know? You're talking budget. You're saying, where can we get money for this and this and this? Well, we need to spend money on something that is a good thing, not something that is a detriment to every person in this community. And um, I would just like to read some of the things that, that fluoridation <coughs> causes. Um, and especially fluoridation mixed with aluminum, which we have, we get aluminum from everything practically. You mix fluoride with it, you have problems with Alzheimer's, which is expanding greatly, as we all know. 
Parkinson's disease, Lou Gehrig's disease, um, ADD, ADHD, dyslexia, developmental brain disorders. Um, it, it accumulates in your pineal gland, which basically um, causes kids to come into puberty much earlier. Um, it also regulates our sleep. It protects the brain from damage from free radicals. And, and the main destructive reaction seen in all degenerative brain disorders. And in babies, uh, another study that was done uh, that were aborted, babies five to eight months of age, uh, gestation, eight months, five to eight months gestation, they found that their brain cells were grossly abnormal. The nerve fibers were not even compatible with typical human nerve fibers. These kids were in obviously fluoridated areas. Um, it, they were grossly abnormal and the nerve fibers were misplaced and swollen when they did autopsies on these babies. Uh, the fluoride levels that are set by the ET EPA are, are supposedly safe and the, the maximum they say is four milliequivalent, I don't know what the, the things are, but anyway, uh, what I'm saying is basically we need to get this out of our water because it's causing great, great medical problems for a lot of people and for all of us. Um, it causes cancer osteoporosis, uh, hypothyroidism and go goiters, um, male infertility, tooth fluorosis. It does not save kids from getting tooth decay. As a matter of fact, they have found that children that live in non-fluoridated water have better teeth than people who live in fluoridated areas. Now, in October of 2010, the UN declared access to clean water a human right. And I think it is my human right not to be medicated with fluoride when I don't want to be. Now, excuse, excuse me, we, we do try to limit it to about three minutes. Okay. Um, the council actually discussed this very issue, what, three months ago, maybe sometime in the last three to six months and uh, came to a conclusion that we weren't going to take action at this time. And um, why, why would that be? Um, I think various councilors had various reasons for that. Councilor Milligan was a strong advocate for removing the fluoride. Um, and as I said, there was a wide-ranging discussion. You might look in the council minutes and see what you see there. Um, we might pursue having a slight, you know, let's have some additional conversation about it, I suppose. But at this point, uh, council is not in favor of removing the fluoride. What can I do about well, they, that? We actually didn't make a decision on whether okay. to remove it or not. Okay. We made I a decision to I think I was postpone wrong. a decision until okay. more information was put before council. Okay. And I'm currently working on putting a citizen group together to make a presentation to the okay. council. This, this, the group is going to be some physicians, some chiropractors, some parents. Some other concerned citizens okay. with facts. Yeah, thanks, Steve. Well, I think that was one of the. I would love to be more than welcome to chat with me after council. Yeah, I think, I think that was the one night I was absent in the last yeah. little while. So. Yeah, thanks. Well, how does one? I know I have to give up my time, but how does one get a petition started then? I'll well, educate the we'll public. We'll talk after the council meeting. Okay. Um, Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. I always hate to cut anybody off. But, uh, and council was talking about very early for you. But we do uh, have a lot of the agenda tonight and need to go ahead and get moving with some things. So, with that, I will turn uh, to our auditor and ask him to tell us about what's up with the audit this year. And we'll just take one and pass it down. Sure. What, you're, what you're getting is the. Uh, the view from the mountaintop uh, on the city's finances. I've uh, excerpted four pieces of data from not only this year's audit, but the previous two years as well. Um, you'll see all smiley faces there, and so if you, you know, accountants are such fascinating speakers, if you want to take a little nap and all you want to know is what's the gist of what I'm going to say, you can look at the smiley faces and uh, 
and basically have what I have to say. Uh, basically, uh, I'm, I'm looking at the city of Monmouth from the perspective of an outsider. Based on the financial information, what would I look at and what conclusions would I draw from, the, from that information? So the first one says, how do our rainy day funds look? The concept here is uh, if on July 1st all the money stopped coming in, how long could you run the city before you ran out of money? And the, the benchmark there is six months. And they figure if you have at least six months reserve on hand, you ought to be able to weather any uh, ups and downs, any surprises that come along. You should have enough uh, financial resiliency to do well. Uh, you'll see that over the past three years, the uh, that number has been increasing from, from eight now to 13. And so that's, uh, that's basically a good sign. It means the city is in good financial condition. The second, the second one says, are we going further into debt or are we getting out of debt? And the concept here is flawed, but I will uh, explain what happens. The theory is it's always nice to get out of debt and you get a smiley face if you get out of debt. The converse is, if you go into debt, you get a frowny face and everyone thinks, yeah, but if we didn't go into debt, we would never have new electric substations, we would never have any improvements to our wastewater treatment plant, and so it's, it's flawed in the sense that going into debt is not a bad thing when it's done uh, for an appropriate purpose. The concept for the frowny face is you are uh, obligating future generations to pay for it. And so even though it's not a bad thing, there has to be a, there has to be a frowny face for every smiley face. And so um, that's, <laughs> that's why I say it's a little bit of a flawed icon, but the concept is the city is, is getting out of debt and those are in thousands of dollars. I mean, it's not $1,466 that you got out of debt, it's $1,466,000. Um, the next- So that's how much less debt we have now than we had last year. That's correct. Even though we passed the new bond for the police station. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because that was after. Because, the yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Does okay. that count? Because we haven't <laughs> sold them yet. So yeah. next year we'll go. Okay. <laughs> The next, the next one is a, a little bit difficult to explain. The concept is uh, the city has two basic functions. One is a business-like function where you charge customers for services, that's the water, sewer, and power and light fund, and a governmental function where you uh, provide services to uh, citizens. The idea is that the business-type activities charge customers to be an ongoing activity. You charge customers what you need in order to keep in business. On the governmental side, the theory is that in the long run, overall, uh, on a long period of time, the people who receive the services ought to pay for them. And uh, that means that the city, with the available resources, ought to provide the level of service that they can. You shouldn't, uh, you shouldn't charge one year's taxpayers more than is necessary so that you can do something in the subsequent year and vice versa. You shouldn't necessarily stockpile money just because you want to sit on a hoard of cash. It means that those people are overpaying. So the concept is in the long run, overall, uh, the, the, the expenditures, the spending that the city does ought to come plus or minus 5% of the of the revenues that come in. That means everybody is basically paying their fair share as you go. If you look at those statistics, you'll say not one of them is within that range. Everyone is the outside end. How do we get a smiley face out of that? And the, uh, the well, there's two reasons. One is because I can be arbitrary and capricious when I assign icons. And the other is that if you take a look at the three years as a whole, the plus eight, the plus six, and the minus 15, it just about nets to zero. And so over a three year period, there's some timing differences, but overall for the last three years, basically everyone has gotten what they paid for. No one has paid, no one has been charged more than what they really ought to have been charged, I guess is a way to say that. The last one, uh, will our revenue bond investors be pleased with our ability to pay them over time? Uh, people who buy municipal bonds are remarkably intolerant when it comes to having their payments late and they always like to be paid and they like to know that you have enough money to make those payments so they can sleep at night. And what they want is the cash flow from operations for, from the water, sewer, and power and light to be, before the debt payments are, are made, at least twice as much as you need 
so that they're sure to get their payments and you have enough left over to absorb surprises. And surprises in utility funds usually come with three zeros at the end, and so they like to make sure that there's plenty of, uh, plenty of margin there in case things happen. Uh, as you can see, the, the ratios there are well in excess of twice, and so the conclusion that someone would draw is, mm -hmm. here's a city that overall is in good financial shape, able to pay your bills as they come due, over a three-year period have basically charged their citizens the cost of government and have not uh, disadvantaged any one particular year to such an extent that someone would have a burr under their saddle and say those jerks down at City Hall don't know what they're doing. Basically, uh, this sheet says the jerks at City Hall do know what they're doing. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, there, that's the view from the top of the mountain. And uh, as mm -hmm. always, if you have any questions, uh, I'm glad to answer them. And uh, even if you have questions other than this evening, uh, Mark has our phone number, and I'm, uh, we view ourselves as a resource to the city. If you have things that you want to discuss, uh, give me a call. I'm always glad to, to, just to talk about whatever you want to talk about. Mark, did I miss anything? Okay. That's so, it. I see it. Well, first of all, I'd like to ask if any counselors have any questions for Tom um, and the board this year. No comments, just the, or questions, just the comment about um, the findings or notices that we had. The last year we had a few things that we changed some policies and procedures, and it looks like all of the things you pointed out got corrected. Yeah, we, yeah. I, I, but Ralph Nader would really be frustrated this year with the city because there's just no graft and corruption to find, and so uh, it makes for a really boring audit, but basically what you want is a really boring audit. <laughs> So the staff report notes that it would be appropriate for someone to make a motion accepting the audit report from Grover Gillen and Swank. I would be entertained by such a motion. I would move that we accept the uh, audit report as presented this evening. Second. Moved and seconded in favor. Aye. Aye. And opposed. I think we will accept that work. And you can just stay right there. I know two other finance directors. That's <laughs> <laughs> pretty funny. The two public finance directors. Right, all right. Okay, so. Um, Who actually know how to read this thing. <laughs> right. What are you trying to say? So, we do have an executive session tonight. Um, I would first ask if there are any council comments this evening. And hearing none, I will turn to the script for the executive session which reads as follows, the City Council will now meet in executive session for the purpose of discussing performance evaluation of public officers and employees. The executive session is held pursuant to ORS 192.6602I, performance evaluation of public officers and employees, which allows the council to meet in executive session. Representatives of the news media and designated staff or other persons shall be allowed to attend the executive session. All other members of the audience are asked to leave the room, not now, um, representatives of the news media are specifically directed not to report on any of the deliberations during the executive session except to state the general subject of the session as previously announced. No decision may be made in executive session. At the end of the executive session, we will return to open session and welcome the audience back into the room. And it is not anticipated that action will be taken this evening after returning from executive session. Um, what I would now do is ask for a motion to adjourn this meeting to uh, until after uh, the Urban Renewal Agency meeting, and it will, we will uh, come back together in work session at that point. So, uh, a motion to adjourn until after Urban Renewal. I move to adjourn our regular meeting until we re resume the shortly. And seconded? Second. In favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? And with that, <coughs> I will turn to the Urban Renewal Agency agenda and remind everybody that there are no longer counselors in there, but rather Mr. and Ms. And I will uh, call to order the Tuesday, January 21st meeting of the Monmouth Urban Renewal Agency and ask fellows for the roll call, please. Mr. Carey is excused. Ms. Coons? Here. Mr. Meyer? Here. Mr. Milligan? Here. Mr. Schaefer? Here. Mr. Silbernagel? Here. Mr. Obers? Here. Any citizen comments on urban renewal agency items? 
And seeing now we have a consent calendar that consists of the minutes from the last Urban Renewal Agency meeting, which was September 17th of 2013. And uh, I can have a motion to approve. I move we approve the minutes as presented. Second. 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 <laughs> Steve gets this one. Moved and seconded in favor. Aye. Aye. Opposed. And with that, I'll turn to the business agenda, which happens to be an audit presentation <laughs> from Tom Glogow, Grove, Mueller, and Swank. And here is page two. And uh, of course, the first thing you're going to look at is the icon, and you'll say, Whoa, how did we get so three happy faces when we just had four smiley faces? And that's, uh, that's what I want to explain to you. Um, let me just preface my comments by saying a smiley face doesn't mean everything is fine, and a frowny face doesn't mean there's problems. The idea of, of those is to spark your thinking, to get you, um, I'll, I'll say, evaluating the actions of the Urban Renewal Agency as an outsider might view them. And the, the net result of what I want to say is an outsider looking at the Urban Renewal Agency would probably say, gee, I hope those folks know what they're doing. Uh, there are some... Uh, <laughs> some and I'm not trying to imply that you don't. I'm saying that an outsider would take a look at what happened and say, this is atypical. This is not what I would expect to see in an urban renewal agency. So let's, uh, I have just three uh, items here. The first one says, how do our rainy day funds look? And again, the same measurement, six months, is the benchmark. If you look at 2013, the number is zero. Okay, and generally speaking, Someone would say, you run out of money. And uh, if you take a look at the urban renewal financial statements, that is true. There is, uh, there's actually a negative uh, $4,000 or something like that. The general concept is if you're in the hole, did you know that you were going to do that? Did you plan on that? And how are you going to get out? So I understand that you've thought that through and you know the answer to those, I'm just saying someone looking at it from the outside would ask that. The next one, are we getting out of debt or going further in? Uh, previous year, no debt at the end of June 2013. Uh, these are not in thousands, these are actual dollars, $227,000 <laughs> <laughs> in debt. Uh, again, no surprise, but someone would say, Gee, you ran out of money and you're over $200,000 in debt. I hope those people knew what they were doing. And the last one that says, uh, who paid for this year's services, current year recipients or prior years? And you'll see basically what this is telling you. In the previous year, money was saved up in anticipation of a project. In the current year, not only that money was spent, but more. And basically, this is the, the downtown streetscape pro project. And everyone understands that that's what happened. But someone looking from the outside who didn't have the rest of the story would take a look at these numbers and say, those are very unusual numbers uh, to be seeing in a municipality. But because you know the facts behind the story, it's not a cause for concern. That's why I say a frowny face doesn't mean there's a problem. It just means that these are not what someone would normally expect to see in a municipal audit report. Does that, Mark, what, what am I missing there? Um, the only thing I would mention on the negative number is if you look at it from a budgetary basis, which is how we do our budget, um, we weren't negative. Um, but when you, you roll that to uh, into the gap financials, then it becomes a negative number. So, um, so that's all yeah. I have. And the, and the other mitigating factor, the debt was owed to the city, which is different from, <laughs> say, Columbia Bank. <laughs> it's nice when you can borrow from yourself. Yeah. Um, you tend to get good interest rates. Uh, so, when er, the thing that sort of hangs here for me, Tom, when we first uh, went into the notion of the renewal agency, one of the things I very clearly remember hearing said over and over again was one of the functions of an urban renewal agency is to take on debt. And so, just you know, can you can you help uh, wrap your concern around, or you know, the outsider's concern around there being debt, 
right. contrast it with the statement that the function of the orbit of the real agency <laughs> is take on that. Yes, that's right. Uh, Actually, the, let me clarify that a little bit. The function of the Urban Renewal Agency is to, um, to, to create, to uh, achieve urban renewal. Right. And they, they can do that through, the, through incurring debt to make those expenses. What has happened is the Monmouth Urban Renewal Agency has chosen a project, has invested money in it, and until, uh, I will say, conceptually speaking, until that debt is repaid, there's not additional projects that the agency can undertake. In other words, they have spent, uh, made a decision, we're going to invest heavily in this project. Now, in order to do another project, we have to sort of get back to our starting place and figure out, are we going to save up money and then spend it, or are we going to incur debt, get the money, make the expenditures, and then repay it in the future? So it's, a, it's a, I'll say, a fiscal philosophy one is, it, uh, it's, I guess it's equivalent to buying a car. You either save up enough money, go to the dealer and pay cash, or you have $100 in your pocket, go to the dealer, buy the car, and get a loan at the credit union. And in, in both situations, you still obtain a car. It's just when do you set aside the money to pay for it? Do you set aside ahead of time, or do you set it aside afterwards? And so the the... The, what the Urban Renewal Agency has done in the past is to save up the money ahead of time, buy not only the car, but some accessories to go with it, and oh, now we've got to pay for those before we do something else. Unless you adopt a different philosophy which says we have an urgency to do this project, we will borrow money now and pay it back in the future. It's a, it's a, it's a I'll say, a council decision based on your fiscal philosophy. Does that clarify things? It does. I'm, I'm, I think where I am is if, in fact, you take on debt and you have revenues, you plan ahead far enough to know what your payments on that debt are going to be, and you have revenues sufficient over that you know over the next few years you're going to be able to pay that debt plus, mm -hmm. you should be able to use that plus to take on perhaps some other debt, as long as you know that you have your payments do not exceed your projected income. And, Unless the bottom falls out of the real estate market mm -hmm. completely, we should be in pretty good shape on revenue. So yes, that's 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 that is, that's exactly correct, and that's why I say there's limitations on the. If, if you look at a frowny face and you think there's a problem, no, a frowny face means, did we know what we were doing? Is that the right decision that we wanted to make? And like I said, a frowny face. You get a frowny face if you go into debt. It doesn't mean it was a bad decision. It just means there is now there is now an obligation that future years have to retire that debt, mm -hmm. and it means that you have, um, I'll say, used your option to invest in a particular project. As you're paying back that debt, if other opportunities come along, you may not be able to take advantage of them because you made a decision now. Mm -hmm. That's not a bad thing, it's just true. Okay. Uh, and the converse is also true. If you choose not to spend money now, as opportunities come along, you will be able, more able, I'd say, to take, to take advantage of those. Well, I would say one thing that we want to take into account is the urban renewal revenue of how it's generated, which is in the increment of how things are developed in the, in, in the, in the district, mm -hmm. uh, and what those revenues, what their projections are, and then trying to match up those revenues and future revenues with potentially debt now versus debt later. Mm -hmm. and so I think that's one of the things that, that we have our staff and, and we keep well aware of is, is where those trends look like and trying to get a bigger project and get a little bit bang for the buck, but also understand that we added, uh, you know, that agency's revenues grew by uh, 50 or 60,000 last year, I think, and, and certainly as we give certain incentives to get certain projects done in the district, that might generate money to the district to pay that back in a very short period of time. Mm -hmm. uh, the apartment buildings, I believe we, we got that back in, in what, a year? Oh, well, less than initially. Less than a year. So yeah, certain the revenues years for year expenditures come and back in, in revenue increment, which is not so common thinking in accounting, but certainly it's it's how the increment of, of revenues works. Yes, that, that's exactly right. The, the Urban Renewal Agency is a, it's run differently than the city. The revenue sources are different, the types of money that is <coughs> spent is different. And so you have, to, you have to kind of take off your city council hat and put on your urban renewal district hat when you're thinking about how, are, you know, what kind of decisions are we going to make? Are we going to incur debt? Are we going to refrain from incurring debt? 
it's it like you said it's it's a different animal. Right. Ca cash flow being key, I think, in that case. Mm -hmm. Uh, any other questions for Tom around urban renewal? Uh, I moved to accept the audit of the annual financial report of the Monmouth Urban mm -hmm. Renewal Agency for the fiscal year ending June 30th, 2013. Second. Moved and seconded. In favor? All right. Aye. Opposed? Aye. And with that, um, that brings us to the end of our uh, business agenda. And I would ask for a thank you. Motion to adjourn urban renewal to back to council work session. So moved. In favor? Aye. Opposed? And we will take